we hear from the Cabinet Secretary, Margaret Kobia. That you want to empower women so that we can have a more equal uh, country, more equal region, more equal uh, in, the, in the globally. In fact, he has committed himself for a very tough target to end FGM, because FGM is awful violence against women. He has committed to end FGM, female genital mutilation, by the year 2022. So you can see I have a task. And you, you are helping me, and I know this is a, a problem that cuts across uh, the growth and Africa. So we, here in Kenya, we have brought that target to end, not like a sustainable development goals where they are adding 2030, but we want to end FGM uh, by the year 2022. I note that the objective of the workshop is to strategize on ending gender violence and harassment at the workplace and promote effective participation of women in trade union activities. This goal is in tandem with the my ministry's objective of promoting inclusion of women in leadership and decision-making position. As you are aware, women wishing to go for elected positions, which most of you do, face stereotype of discrimination, lack of finances, and above all, violence, among other challenges. I'm encouraged that the trade union family in Africa are taking the bold step to confront the challenge of gender-based violence that affect persons in the workplace. As we address this issue, we should remain clearly aware that gender-based violence is a violation directed at the individual based on their gender identity. It manifests in physical, sexual, verbal, emotional, and psychological forms, including abuse, threat, coercion, and deprivation. More significantly, sexual gender-based violence is the most common violation against women and girls, not only in Africa, but globally. One out of every five women globally will become a victim of either attempted rape or rape over in their lifetime. The World Bank Development Report 2017 underscores the urgency of addressing the pervasive violation in our communities and workplaces. It emphasizes that gender-based violence leads to discriminative allocation of and wasteful use of reproductive resources. It undermines peace and mutually supportive coexistence of male and female workers and culminates into reduced production in communities and at the workplace, besides eroding human dignity and confidence. Looking at the status of gender-based violence in Kenya, women are affected by gender-based violence. According to 2013 study, the World Health Organization, that 5% of women worldwide experience either a physical or sexual violence. Violence stands from eight to six countries and experience physical and is, sorry, Violence studies from 86 countries across the World Health Organization regions indicated that up to 68% of women had experienced physical or sexual violence in their lifetime from intimate partners and sometimes people who are known to them. The highest prevalence rates were found in Central Sub Saharan Africa with an estimated 66% of women having experienced a physical sexual violence. The, the violation cuts across borders, the cuts across race, socioeconomic class, ethnicity, and religion. In Kenya, the demographic of health survey of 2014 indicates that approximately 38% of the married women aged between 15 and 49 and experienced physical violence. 
More than one fifth of the Kenyan women have had victims of sexual violence. The high prevalence rate showed that gender-based violence is a matter that should be a concern to all Kenyans and, in this case, all Africans. Some of the gender-based uh, violence at workplace include sexual coercion, physical assault, gender-based discrimination, stigmatization, and social exclusion, sexual harassment and intimidation, sexual exploitation and abuse, trafficking for forced labor, and sex work within and across borders. At the same time, we are also seeing other emerging types of gender-based violence and um, like, I would like to mention, especially in Africa, we have found women like safe spaces, safe spaces like churches. But unfortunately, Dr. Atwari, and I would like you to help me in this, we have found churches, some either rogue bishops, rogue priests in Africa, where they are exploiting the women because of their either poverty related or health related or where they promise and change them emotionally and in the process we find women are constantly being exploited through the region and I think in Kenya we have seen where women will give all their property, all their salary to go to be prayed for by those rogue or fake bishops. Women who are here, we must rise up and educate other women and tell them, no, your relationship to God is direct. You don't have to go through a bishop who assaults you. <laughs> and then we will not be able to fight it alone. That's why I'm asking Dr. Atuari and the men in this room that let's not watch our sisters and our mothers being exploited by raw, fake religion where they are being told we are being prayed for and emotionally, they think they are kind of charged and they, they, they are exploited. We, that is a new form besides what has already been existing. Further, along with the physical and emotional suffering, the economic costs amount to loss of money due to medical and health care services or loss of productivity because of increased absenteeism at the workplace. Of course, you can imagine if a woman has been assaulted, maybe that week she might not be able to go to work. That is, she has spent the money to pay for her medical services or even stay home. It affects job performance, decreased job retention, and the career advancement. Victims of gender discrimination lose motivation and the morale and that is necessary to perform their jobs effectively. And of course, when it comes to interviews, if you have been affected by this, may it be at home, of course you can't perform like any other man who has had all the time and is not suffering from lack of confidence or is feeling injured. But what have we done? What are the best practices and policies on we have practiced here in Kenya? Ending gender based at the workplace is, is a goal that works to benefit all employers and the uh, empro employers, the workers, the community, the nation at large. I wish to share some of the insights that will benefit your workshop because I read on your <coughs> program you're having a workshop. So my sisters, as you come here, you have to come to work and shop for new ideas. That's how it becomes a workshop. At the policy and the registrative, registrative level, there are some global and regional registrative framework in place to support and guide your programs and interventions, including what I'm trying to say is you are not going to invent, to invent a wheel. A lot of effort has gone through. There's a lot of literature you could read and find frameworks that have worked in different countries, then you, imp you implement them in your, our own context. One of these frameworks is Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination against women. It's called SINDO, in, in short, of 1979. We also have the Beijing Platform of Action, of course, which has flagged out 12 action points. Beijing Platform of Action, 1997, 
the African Charter on People and Human Rights of the uh, on the Rights of Women in Africa 2003. The African Char the, the, the Solomon the Solemn Declaration of Gender Equality in Africa 2004. These fund fundamental frameworks provide a solid ground for developing interventions. The United Nations has also developed guiding principles for institutions and organizations in addressing gender-based violence. This will provide invaluable input in your deliberations. The Therefore, it requires a lot of getting all the resources. Thank God now we have internet, we can put all those resources and framework and be able to work as we prepare the proceedings of this workshop. One, we need to promote gender equality and the power relations that protect and respect the rights of women, men, at the workplace. Two, there's a need to ensure equal participation by women and men through the systematic use of participatory assessment on the issues related to sexual gender-based violence. There is also need to adhere to the international and the national laws at all times. Mainstream gender-based, mainstreaming gender-based response and the prevention of all, all interventions. Ensuring management of survivors of sexual violence are undertaken by persons of the same gender and also given some safety. Kenya has championed the prote protection of women through legislative action and the boast of rich legislative framework from which the conference could gain some insight. I encourage you to produce some of them, which were mentioned also by the Secretary General. One, we have a Constitution of Kenya 2010, which provides for human rights and fundamental freedom. Two, Protection of Against Domestic Violence Act 2015. Three, national policy for prevention and response for gender-based violence. Four, Sexual Offenses Act 2006. Four, five, Computer Misuse and the Cyber Crime Act. This is very new, 2018. That is Computer Misuse and the Cyber Crime Act. Remember, the internet has become the most bullying and abusive. Those, that is now another emerging challenge where women are facing gender-based violence. Employment Act 2007, multi-sectoral standard operating procedures for management of sexual violence. And with all these programs, Kenya has achieved some of the milestones and presents some valuable lessons for this workshop. And Having the framework is one thing, having the policies is one thing, but implementation of them in our own context, then we must be able to have very clear data so that we can be able to measure progress. So I hope this workshop will frame out data and statistics for women in gender-based violence, very, very critical. We have some of the best interventions. Uh, I will share just a few. To support victims in times of distress, the government of Kenya has established several programs for establishment of safe spaces. Clinical management of S uh, SGBVP, that is sexual gender-based violence survivors, provision of dignity kits for young girls and women, training of service providers on duty and duty bearers, and the provision of post-exposure uh, among treatment, among other initiatives. Two, Kenya has established intergovernmental framework to accelerate prevention and response and put, put in place gender sector working groups that enhance prevention of response to uh, gender-based violence. The government has also developed a training curriculum on gender-based violence for the police officers and they develop a manual for prosecutors who have been deployed to specifically deal with the matters of gender-based uh, cases, especially at the police station, but in a safe environment. Government has also partnered with the private sector to establish 
and G gender based violence hotline uh, three of them in particular we have 1192 and 1195 then there's a pro bono lawyers who provide free legal uh, service and especially through FINDA. Government also created a partnership with the United Nations Women